we women, we tend to keep lots of emotions in our pelvic floor. Mm, and of yes. course, that emotions affect our uh, affect our liver, intestine. We we have more problem to letting go, which affects our large intestine. Mm. We have problem with fear and anger, which affects our liver, for example. So, I think emotions as well is another factor that we need to bring in equation of. Uh, uh, detoxing and detoxing the mind and emotions as well, not only the Absolutely. body. Hey community, welcome to Speak Up Light Up. Here you can meet industry celebrities, successful entrepreneurs, thought leaders from all over the world who are sharing their transformational stories, their path to success and lighting up with some tools for self-discovery and creating your own reality. I'm your host, Valerie Pesetti. In this podcast, you know, we're talking a lot about business, about some strategies, how to achieve and get what we want, uh, how to accomplish more in this life, how to, you know, become a better, better version of ourselves. Um, but, you know, we very often on our journey to, I don't know, conquer another peak, we really forget about the most valuable asset. It's our health. And when we achieve specific age, we're feeling like, oh my gosh, I have this, I have that, but I'm not really feeling fully satisfied and fulfilled because maybe you don't have enough energy. Maybe your health, physical or mental health is really in struggle. That's why the next two episodes we are going to dedicate to a very important topic, our physical health. We're approaching the end of the year. That's why I think it's quite, um, in a way, symbolical to talk today. This is our last episode this year about detoxing, detoxing our body, mind and soul. Ready? Let's go. So let me introduce my guest, um, Rosanna Corridor, specializes in women's health and hormones. He founded Rosanna Coretta Holistic Health as an opportunity to serve um, her network with her expertise and experience. Natural harmonology and multidimensional health healing are two of her strengths and passion. She believes that health conditions result from incoherence in the mind, body and spirit. And aligning these three is what she does best. Rosanna is international law known for her empowering and multidimensional approach to fertility and weight loss. She holds a bachelor's in health sciences and a master's in quantum natural medicine. Today, she is a doctorate and PhD student in integrative natural medicine. Hey, Rosanna, it's such a pleasure to Hi. see you. <laughs> Such a pleasure to be here and thank you, Valerie, for this invitation. I'm a big fan of your work, uh, your podcast, the community you built, and as well your book. Uh, so you when much. you asked me and I was like, I'm, I'm really thrilled to speak uh, in your podcast and as well being one of the amazing community of women who spoke in your podcast uh, in the past year. Yeah, well, we actually have speakers and men and women and power of humanity to speak up with their talents, with their gifts. Well, thank you very much for dedicating your time. I remember last time we met in Dubai, we were talking about relocations. I was about to move in Europe. You are now also moved to Saudi Arabia. You're a mom of two. Wow. Amazing changes. Congratulations <laughs> with baby. Correct. Uh, you know, I remember I saw an Instagram post of yours after you became a second time mom and you you start working straight away. Yes. And I was like, wow, power woman. <laughs> and now I do the same. And honestly, yeah. I, I remember your post in Instagram and I said, you know, my definition of heroes change when I became a mother. Yeah. 
<laughs> and for me, going. the single moms are absolute heroes. I don't know how they do it. God bless them. <laughs> well, we're just following our heart, right? And life is Correct. so many dimensions. And uh, we Correct. just need to enjoy ourselves, express ourselves in so many different ways. Correct. Correct. But, yeah. you know, to make it more efficient in a way that we also feel empowered health wise, I think the very important topic is detox. And nowadays there are so many ways, like so many ways you look uh, in social media or you listen to your like, I don't know, friends, but also different doctors. <laughs> there are so many ways to detox. It's like, I don't know, sometimes it's pills, oils, there is a whole companies like i don't know network marketing companies who are offering different products their juices smoothies oh my gosh in your opinion what are the healthiest ways to start detoxing your body uh, let's start uh, let's talk about um the industry that you are uh, you spoke about um it will be the products the detox products Mm -hmm. are so popular right now and the word detox became a buzzword anyway yeah. and um, they estimate that the market for detox products uh, grow to 70 billion us dollars wow. until 2025 and that is a increase yearly increase of five percent market growth that is a lot yeah. so many investments right now they don't give you back five percent interest right <laughs> and uh, yeah that is why so many companies start to uh, monetizing from mm -hmm. this trend uh, i think it's really good to detox but you need to know how to detox yeah and how to prepare yourself that is so important that is not that is not something that you do it without any knowledge it's not you are taking a, a green juice in a bottle and you feel like you detox first of all green juice needs to be taken immediately because that uh, oxidizes very fast so what you buy for example in a bottle a mm. green juice they call it detox doesn't do anything so that is why I'm here and I advocate for proper way of detoxing. And as well, I'm teaching in my courses the proper way of detoxing and accompany people through the detox. And so that is why I'm really passionate about talking today to your audience about my expertise and my uh, experience with going through detox myself and taking uh, people, my clients, through the detox journey. So what are the first steps to start the process? I think, as you mentioned, it's preparation and then... Correct. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Preparation is so important. Uh, I would never recommend anybody to start a detox without going through some steps to prepare their body. And the whole concept of preparation is opening your natural pathways to uh, for the ways to uh, leave your body if you start detoxing you literally release lots of de uh, lots of toxins in your body mm -hmm. but your pathways are blocked your pathways are closed and you cannot um, get rid of the toxins mm -hmm. and actually that harms you much more than if you haven't done detox mm. so what are the pathways of uh, drainage pathways or the waste release pathways in the body uh, is colon okay that is the first uh, pathway we need to take in consideration and uh, then it's a uh, bladder kidney uh, after that comes um, uh liver mm. then after liver we go one level higher lymphatic system lungs and then cell because we need to as well help ourselves 
she mm-hmm. released toxins and then going through all the levers that i mentioned before to uh, remove from your uh, remove the toxins from your body mm-hmm. so first thing i recommend is just pay attention that your pathways are open so once uh, and if it's not open you need to open it okay and actually open that means uh, detoxifying but you have to start one by one to make sure that everything works before you go and take products before you go and take herbs uh, or drink juices and so on mm. so basically this definitely should be accompanied by a specialist uh, do you need any, to do any kind of medical checks or how it works normally? Uh, correct. So what I usually do, I can go step by step through all the channels and tell you exactly what you can do to make sure that uh, your channels are open. Mm-hmm. First one was colon. Um, of course, you can get a colon check. You can get a colon hydrotherapy to make sure that all the waste that are accumulated there leaving your body but as well if you have constipation if you have dairy uh, diarrhea and so on you have to um you have to first address that issues before you go and do detox right mm-hmm. um personally i think having lots of drinking lots of water keeping your colon clean for constipation it's great to take magnesium citrate in the evening before you sleep for example Mm -hmm. so it's a magnesium citrate uh, specifically help for your uh, bowel movement and then you have to only take it until your bowel movement is uh, regulated and then you can leave it because otherwise it goes other way and becomes uh, mm. diarrhea okay um exactly what what else you can do you can take apricots and prunes uh, there are some yoga sequences i teach mm. um when you do that yoga sequences you uh, you need to go to the toilet immediately afterwards for example uh, aloe vera is amazing to drink you can drink before you sleep and when you wake up you will be able to uh, go to the toilet um there are so many other things you can do there are only few of them that i mentioned Mm. then we go to the level of bladder and kidneys is so so important to drink lots of water as well it's important that you don't increase your water intake uh from one liter to three today because it's literally not going to leave your body it's going to be water inten- uh, intention and uh, water retention your body right mm-hmm. so it's so important that you um, increase it gradually and our body has a programming for example if your body think that um uh, you receive one liter of water every day, our kidneys will program for one liter water. And because mm-hmm. it's not enough, they literally keep the water and you crave more salt because then in that way you can store water more. And your colon, uh, your kidney, sorry, doesn't let the water go pass through it easily okay and then of course you get lots of problem with the kidney and bladder in that case but at least your kidneys they have enough water to function right mm. so you have to increase your water uh, water intake i'm saying always one glass at a time for example if you are taking four glasses increase to mm. five for two three days and then increase another time for uh, another glass for two three days and so on that's a great so event. what exactly and what helps uh, of course yoga helps a lot uh yoga that you put your legs up or you have uh, mm-hmm. uh upside down uh, headstand handstand um what else it works lemon lemon juice works 
really good like if you drink in the morning lemon juice and keep your body as well alkaline mm. um so then we go one level uh, higher is our liver is mm. so important because liver literally filter your blood um produce bile break down the chemicals break down your hormones to remove from your body and then whatever it removes goes either through your bowel stool or goes through your kidney bladder as a urine right mm -hmm. um again it's really important for livers to have some liver cleanse tea like dandelion um some uh, olive oil apple juice for example these are all helping with liver and it's very important that we are not overburdening our liver right so as well um reduce alcohol reduce fatty food sugar and so on mm -hmm. to help your liver to because liver cleanse itself right if you yeah. just not overburden it it cleanse itself mm -hmm. Um, then the other level is one level higher the lymphatic system, right? And that is whatever, uh, that's part of your immune system, actually. And in our life that we are sitting all the time, our lymphatic systems are blocked. So mm. they are not passing all the bacteria, virus, uh, toxins um, to be removed through our bladder and urine, right? And then we get water intention, we get uh, loads of other uh, issues. Uh, for lymphatic system, dry body brush is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, trampling or going for a run uh, is, is really helpful as well. Um, and as well, yoga stretches, because when you stretch, uh, stretch you help your yeah. lymphatic system and lymphatic nodes to contract and to release when they contract their release toxins mm. um and then of course you have lungs nowadays we breathe uh, air that is not clean you yeah. have lots of lead you have lots of aluminium mm. uh, you have lots of uh, pollution in the air and using uh, air purifier for home is a must it's not even luxury negotiable yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, use plants for your home and um, it helps you uh, to uh, to clean the air in another mm -hmm. level uh, and if you are lucky to live in countries or in uh, countryside that you have nature around you uh, that will help as well mm -hmm. and of course use briefing techniques uh, whatever you know, uh, heart mat breathing, yogic breathing, and all mm -hmm. that works. And the last level, which is really important, that's last level because um, I think we have to open it from down to top, and cells mm -hmm. are really on the top. Um, when we are not having enough water, for example, uh, our cells are programmed to receiving that amount of water. They build, um, they build um, um, cholesterol, they build fat around yeah. the cells. So they can keep the water. But from the other size, side, they are not releasing the waste because they keep the water too long, right? So our cells get literally polluted because we are not drinking enough water, we don't have uh, uh, enough antioxidant um, food that has antioxidants. Um, we have to consider all that mm. before we go and take a medication for detox or do a green juice and um, start the detoxing process. Mm. Wow, this is so valuable. I, I'm going to start adding one glass every day <laughs> of water. 
So, you know, I, I love that you also mentioned yoga, stretch, breathing, uh, because I'm obviously a fan of all these things and know how much it makes changes in the body, also mind and obviously soul. Um, besides that, how can you support your system during detox? For example, you went through all these stages that you just mentioned and you're already starting to like you chose your method, uh, how you want to detox your body. Is there is any kind of um, ways how to support yourself or you just continue living like you normally like work or maybe you need to sleep more? I don't know. What is the ways to support your system? Uh, honestly, I think the first thing you can start doing today is quitting sugar, processed sugar. Yeah. And I know how difficult it is because I did it by myself so many times and then I was pregnant, I was eating sugar again and then Mm -hmm. I stopped again after I gave birth. I know how it works. I know how sugar can become an addiction. Um, But I'm not telling you when you crave sugar, mainly when you have problem with cortisol and stress Uh, you will need sugar to get going, right? Mm -hmm. And what I recommend is always having a healthy alternative, but sweet replacement at home. Mm -hmm. For example, I buy, I will have always dates at home, Uh, always some black resins, uh, Mm -hmm. blueberries, some other fruits that are sweet. So when I crave sweets, I will not go to uh, to the alternatives uh, that has processed sugar. Mm. And we ha- the other thing we need to really pay attention to is uh, not sweets uh, particularly. For example, if you buy tomato juice to make pasta, many tomato juice, they have sugar inside. Yes. Just mm. pay attention that you are not buying as well products that they have sugar include mm. this is the hard. first thing yes because sugar as well goes to your colon and sticks in your colon like lots of mm-hmm. toxins that we accumulate in our colon is as well coming from sugar and as well for our small intestine intestine for our gut is really bad for for many many things and sugar as well make your uh, make you accumulate fat and fat is literally where the toxins live. Okay. Mm. So when you have more fat means more places that the toxins accumulate, right? Yeah. Um, so first thing, honestly, just, just don't eat processed sugar. Okay. Mm. Second thing that I would say for maintenance that keeps you really going do exercise 30 minutes of exercise every day even if it's just going for a walk even if it's 30 minutes of going up your stairs and coming back you know even if it's winter you know and you don't want to go to the gym or you don't want to go outside just go in your stairs go up and down for 30 minutes Mm -hmm. is really really important that you keep your body moving Mm -hmm. and the fair thing that I would recommend as well, drink lots of water. Mm. So these are the things you can literally continue doing and support your body. Mm. Well, this is great things to take into account, but you know, we humans have this um, kind of habit, wait until it's already you know too late. And what are the symptoms that it's time to detox? Yes, very good question. Uh, Symptoms can start from a lack of focus, Mm. foggy brain, fatigue. When you wake up in the morning and you literally, you sleep uh, and you feel like you haven't slept, you didn't have rest, or you cannot sleep. That's another, Mm. um, another indication. When you start having uh, bad skin, like when your skin start uh, showing some signs, 
uh, acne or just not clear skin. Uh, as well, your hair, when you get uh, start having hair mm. uh, problem, uh, bowel problem, intestine problem, bloating, gas, um, pain on the uh, upper abdominal on the right side is where the gallbladder is. Mm. Uh, these are all uh, constipation, uh, diarrhea, that is all signs that you need detox but yesterday <laughs> well our oh dear <laughs> listeners and viewers how many of you feel like you have an urgency to detox <laughs> well definitely so you know um how often would you recommend to detox from time to time like for example how many times per year a very good question i usually recommend because um, I believe that liver detox takes longer than all of other uh, channels to open. I usually recommend to to do liver detox um, five, six months, like one week per month okay. or five, six months. And then after that, only once a year or twice a year, you can start doing detox the whole mm -hmm. system, right? But the first time you will lose lots of uh, gallstones and lots of toxins. And I don't recommend to do it once and stop. Mm -hmm. I recommend that people uh, clean all the, um, all the gallstones, for example, or uh, the liver completely before they stop and usually it takes four to six months or four to six times that you do detox mm. you know uh, there are so many uh, like different um, types of information for example also you need to detox during specific lunar phase <laughs> what is your attitude to this uh well actually in ayurveda they say to detox on the day of the new moon mm. and i personally tried it and i think it's is right i i love to um organize standing? myself in a way that the day that i detox is a day of the new moon mm. okay interesting so is so basically it's uh is it like about listening a system actually because it's really... uh, yes because um they say that body is detoxifying itself anyway on a new moon like resetting and of course when you prepare and when you help the body to detox um on that day it will um it will just make the effect bigger. Mm. Well, I think one another question would be interesting to know what is the difference for men and women when it comes to the dogs? Is, is there is any difference? I know that you're focusing to, to work with women, but what are the differences? Uh, well, there are loads of differences. Uh, men hormone and woman hormone is completely different man body and woman body is different for example what advantage that we have is uh, when you do high intensity training uh, for a man it starts working after 40 minutes for mm -hmm. a woman after 25 minutes so okay. when we get exactly so we can do actually shorter time of exercises to get the same effect uh, that mm -hmm. a man do right and women need more carb than a man. Like when we do diet, we have to take that in consideration. Mm. And the other studies shows that uh, men do much better in intermittent fasting than women. So these are all the, in, the differences between woman body and man body. Um, unfortunately, many research has done about men, like the the yeah. group that they do the uh, the um, scientific uh, mm -hmm. um, research on them are mostly men 
That's yeah. why uh, we we are in such a need of including women in uh, mm. in in the research, right? Mm. And personally, I I read a lot about women's health, and the two programs I have is as well particularly for women. So I have done lots of uh, trial and error by myself to figure mm. out how many hours of intermittent fasting is, is right for a woman, where I see the sweet spot of uh, eating carb and not eating carb, for example. Mm. So, yeah. um, exactly. So we need much more research and much more uh, doctors who are working with woman, woman's body and they know the woman's body. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point because all the researches even nowadays are mostly focused on men, even if they develop different kind of medicines and pills. Yes. And then they also are kind of applicable, supposed to be applicable to women, but women have completely different yes. system, yes. especially hormone system, pregnancy. Exactly breastfeeding <laughs> we have so correct many correct faces. and as well um we women we tend to keep lots of emotions in our pelvic floor mm, and of yes. course that emotions affect our and uh, affect our liver intestine we we have more problem to letting go which affects our large intestine mm. we have problem with fear and anger, which affects our liver, for example. So I think emotions as well is another factor that we need to bring in equation of uh, uh, detoxing and detoxing the mind and emotions as well, not only the Absolutely. body. Absolutely. That's so true. Wow, there are so many insights for me personally. I hope our listeners, our viewers also made lots of notes out of this. Thank you very much, Rosan, for being part of this. And we are continuing our conversation next year. We have a very exciting topic about the foods that maximize your energy. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>